Hello, let's um, look at one of my favorite photographers. Um, I've talked about him before. I've had to rearrange some videos, take them down. YouTube doesn't like certain things displayed, so I have to be really picky about what I show. I would love to show this whole book because I think it's wonderful. It's a great overview. This is George Platt Lines by David Leddick. It's, it's by Taschen, so it's the Taschen book of George Platt Lines. And so I thought I would show you some of my favorites that I can show and just talk about them. Big book, beautiful book. And we have the portrait of George Platt Lines. I like this one because you can see the detail in his jacket and his tie bar um, popping his tie out. I will remove that now. I don't like to leave these in there. And then I skip a bunch just because there's a lot, there's a bunch of writing in here. This was a self-portrait, by the way, in 19, uh, 1934. So it's a, it's a really nice photo, the one that's used quite a bit. Um, there's another one in here with him with white hair, um, which I like too. He took a lot of, of famous uh, photos of, of random people. Here's Aldous Huxley in 1947. Here's Burt Lancaster. I like this one. It's very moody. Kind of, he's there. He's kind of, I don't know, sitting at the table. But look how dark this one is. And any photographer knows, you know, if, especially he's, I mean, he has quite a, he has a skill level. Um, this isn't by accident. This is quite intentional. Here the natural light is very nice. I love the wood grain here. Sort of the, the compartmentalizing of, Aldous Huxley. Uh, Kirk Douglas. Has anyone heard the rumor that he murdered someone? I've heard that. I can't, I can't remember where I heard that. He covered it up. It's a small portrait. I don't know if it's cropped or not. Lovely 1937 Johnny Westmuller. He always has sleepy bedroom eyes. Some rubber plants behind him. Who doesn't love Johnny Westmuller? Tarzan, the Tarzan. Buster Crab, of course, is good Tarzan too, but Johnny Westmuller, I think everybody loved Johnny Westmuller. He's just laying in the dirt. It's a good portrait of him. Here's the ballet picture. So here is him in ballet tights. Um, with the white hair. Um, I'm not sure when he went white, but he looks fairly young, like he's maybe 40, and he's, his hair is just uh, stark white. So, And he did some really nice ballet photography, but um, I thought I'd show off some of my favorites. This is John Kriz, Krizza in Billy the Kid, 1949-1950. This is Igor Yuskovich, uh, 1950. Look at the dark. So I love how this takes up the whole page, the shadow, the legs. This is Eric Brun, 1949. And Yurik Shabaleski. So I like the costume in this and the head turn. Um, this one is a very dynamic, sort of almost like a promo photo. I think his ballet work is some of his best, um, the way he captured the stars, the ballet stars, the dancers. These are from the uh, male nudes. Um, these are some of my favorites. These are both the Ritter brothers, uh, 1933, very early on. This is the, the bandage, like how to bandage someone behind there. Um, there's the foot's bandage, the arm. It's like they've been practicing. Um, that's why I like it. This one is definitely more composed. Look at the light. 
on the curve of the back, the feet. The Ritter brothers. So these are two. This is um, one of his women, um, Kate Drain Lawson, 1935. Um, a larger woman, kind of turned. This is Victor Craft, 1936. I like this one kind of with the, the crinkled paper or plastic. I believe it's just paper. This is Jose Martinez. 1937, just the, in the door or the window, studio, the silhouette, the light behind him. This is Blanchard Kennedy, kind of just the latter there, 1936. These are this is Dora Maxwell with Edward Bigelow and Jonathan Titchener, 1943. Like this nursing thing is interesting, the almost like medical photography. Uh, and this is Ivan Allen, 1952. I love this one. So why do I love this one? Look how the gradient goes from dark to light. We have the silhouette. The arched back, which appears quite a bit in um, plat line photography, shadow hitting the face, emphasizing the um, the cheek, the hand clearly visible, very in focus, the feet very in focus, um, the horizontal plane here, but it's interesting, it's not flat, it's broken up like there's pieces there that could be lighting, but, um, and the look on the face is sort of nonchalant, innocent, the unnatural turn of the hand is kind of strange. I don't know if that was just something like that happened spontaneously or whether it was directed that way. This is Peter Hansen and Richard uh, Sisson here in a bedroom, 1947. This is Peter Hansen, uh, who you can't see very much here, but here you see, I think he's very handsome. Uh, in the bathroom, 1947. Just a lovely photo. Half of it is black. Just there. These are also very nice. This is Francisco Mancion, 1948. Very beefcake style, a beach, wrapped tile, wrapped towel, even a pendant, natural body hair. This is Ralph McWilliams, 1954. Um, twine or, or uh, jute rope, just kind of hanging, breaking up the space. Um, zips down, sort of a sailor-esque outfit with the, the, um, the really long shorts or the very short pants. Unbuttoned in sort of a provocative way. Shielding the eyes, too. This is Warren Rude. Same person, both. But here we have a towel. Um, look at the back lighting, popping the figure out. 1955, again. This looks like it was sort of the same. I think the lighting was adjusted a bit. But I love his handsome profile. He has very nice. The hair is nice. The exposed clavicles, the arms, kind of very youthful. Very nice. Here's some of his fashion photography. Um, this happens to be in my top five favorite photos of George Platt Lines. This is Whit Duffy. His profile is a little bit, I think it's it's more handsome than his, his front this front facing photo. It's kind of a rare photo. You don't see it that often. He is, this is from 1950. Is this man handsome or what? This man is like the epitome of, look at the jaw, the nose, the pinstripe suit, 
The decor. He looks like he just stepped out of a movie. He is intensely handsome. Double-breasted suit. Um, surprise there's no cigarette, but look at that. And this is just, just I just really wanted to show this photo, but this one's nice too. Dinner dress. I've been Clyde uh, Robe de Denier, uh, 1950. So we don't know who the model is, unless her name is Abend Clyde, but I don't think it is. Um, look at how the shadow is projected here on the side. This is his mythology. So this is, I like this one because this is him working. He's got a Sagittarius uh, uh, sort of picture there. Um, someone's helping him, and that's George working with his camera. We see some photographic equipment, a, a ladder. Some of these are kind of, what's the word? They're kind of disconcerting. That's a good word. That is a good word, disconcerting. And here are some of my favorites. We have um, Camus and Phyllis, I Don't Know the Myth, 1939. Narcissus. Look at the, the bulbs coming out of the body. This one, the tree. I know most everybody knows the myth of Narcissus, falling in love with his image and drowning. There's even a children's story where the... Um, the puppy dog is looking over in the river and has a bone in his mouth and he's jealous of the other image and goes to get it and drops his bone in the water and loses his his um, his bone. So that's sort of a children's take on the myth, if you've heard of that. Um, here's two, this one's kind of really disturbing. <laughs> With the horns, uh, horns on, on people's heads, so it's just kind of strange. Acteon. This is Blanchard Kennedy. Um, Acteon. And 1939. This is 1939 as well. This one is Pan Walter R. Romer. I love images of Pan. One of my favorite characters in mythology. The, the, in, you see the horns. You see the face obscured. You see it's not the sharpest photo. We have the dirt. We have the... the that I can, oh, I know what these are. It's milkweed. There's the milkweed um, uh, seed heads and there's the things coming out. So it's all dried milkweed sticks because when they, when the plant uh, dies back, it never dies because it, it lives under the ground and kind of shoots up. These are the, um, it's the milkweed um, seeds that, that fly out of there. There's thousands of them that pop out. And what's left behind is this husk and some of them finally do open and kind of strag they're stragglers. And this is Pygmalion, 1939. I love this one. We have the woman here, and then this lovely man, this soft back with the rear end. And this is the unknown myth. John Ferenx, F-E-R-E-N-C-Z. Myth in canoe, myth in canoe, unknown myth. But this guy is handsome. You can tell just by seeing some of his face. He's adorable and lovely. And that's the last photo. Um, that's a lovely one to end with. Oh, let's do, let's do more. These are kind of, these are safe. Um, this one's freaky. The birth, second birth of Dionysus. Uh, it's very strange. And this one is Cyclops. Samuel Cooperberg, 1939. This has some photo manipulation in it, which is um, where you actually play with the negative. There's airbrushing involved sometimes. There's cut and paste. So, yeah. Let me see. Here's the information on the book. This came out in 2000, published by Tashin. Um, David Ledick is the one who uh, did the essay, the forward, and yep, printed in Italy. So there we go. I even had to take the dust jacket off because the dust jacket 
is kind of um, suggestive and naked, but I love it. I love the dust jacket with the, the man. Uh, you see his rear end there dangling and the other man's like underneath of him. It's one of his most famous photos. Anyway, there you go. Um, thank you for watching and listen to me talk about photography, some of my favorites. Uh, coming up, I have quite a few Maplethorpe books. Can't show everything, but I can show you what I like and what I can, what I can get away with. Of course, everybody likes Maplethorpe's flowers. They're absolutely gorgeous. So we'll see some of those too. See you later.